Hello, update from the modular shed. Now it's going to be quite a quick one because it's extremely cold out here. As you can see from this circular piece of ice, which came from my uh, bucket of mud and water doorstop. But anyway, let's head inside the shed and check the temperature on my display here. Ah, yes, it's zero degrees. Now I know that this um, thermometer thing doesn't go below zero degrees it never shows temperatures below that so <laughs> it could be below zero degrees there's no way of knowing oh and see my little cable tie mod which holds the display on because this display sticks onto the plastic uh, holder with two tiny little strips of double-sided tape and they've long since lost their sticky so yeah that cable tie now holds the display in place Okay, let's turn the lights on. And they're currently running from this big uh, 100 amp hour LifePo 4 battery, which quite frankly is massively uh, over the top for this job. So I'm gonna run lights in this shed, probably in several zones using sodium ion uh, going forwards. Okay, so here is my uh, give and take energy transfer system from the 25 volt battery that one there to this 12 volt battery but it will be to the sodium ion battery um, this is in full winter mode now um, because there's a condensation problem what tends to happen is the underside of this roofing um, this is very cold at night and the moisture the, the warm moist air of course rises up condenses on the underside of the roof and then it drips off in big globs and this stuff is bitumen impregnated so what tends to happen is brown muck drops down so you can see that over my 25 volt battery and the electronic uh, voltage controlled relay the buck converter and the ant miner i've got this uh, sort of temporary shelf which i put up last winter when i discovered the problem it's just pieces of um, hardboard and that's protected the electronics because the previous one of these uh, water dripped on the switches and because there's voltage across those switches it all started to ooh, what's the word electrolyze now there's a problem here um this relay is on so the give relay is saying i can give you some power but the buck converter if i switch it off it's set for 15 volts because this battery goes up to about 14.6 um, and 1.2 amps because this was getting actually quite hot at more than that this is supposed to be um, I think a 6 amp buck converter but yeah you'd have to enhance the cooling for that so 15 volts so you switch it on and what do you expect 15 volts no we're getting 26.2 which is the voltage on the 25 volt battery it's coming straight through the buck converter and to the output. So the buck converter has failed in some sort of pass-through mode. And I think it's one of these little XL Semi chips. Uh, it's on the back actually, so you can't see it. I think it's gone into effectively uh, failed short. So it's passing the input voltage straight to the output. So as soon as the take relay switched on, the fuse, and it's a good thing I did fit a fuse. There's a fuse here. That fuse just instantly blew. You might be able to see that it's blown, possibly there. Um, so yeah, this has failed, and I suspect it's just the XL Semi uh, chip. And I think the reason it happened is, I wanted to fit this terminal block. This is a 25 amp terminal block. And so I cut the solar wires and crimped on um, fork terminals and put them in this block because eventually I'll want my little ammeter thing up there. Um, when I did that, I, I kind of thought, well, I, the last thing I want to do is short that out because that is fed through this thing. And this thing is effectively a uh, short on the positive and a short through the shunt on the negative. So this just is a pass through. And then down to the battery. So I took this fuse out. Now the problem with that is I did it during the day. And that means that on this system, rather than getting 25 volts from the battery it was getting about 30 volts or possibly more maybe even 35 volts from the solar panel outside 
So this shot up to 35 volts. And that, of course, means that 35 volts came into my give relay and came into the buck converter. And I think this thing's only spec for an input of up to 30 volts. So probably the XL semi chip has just gone pop. And now it's passing the input voltage straight through to the output. So this is effectively doing nothing now. It's, um, it's broke. It's broken. So what I need to do is um, take all this indoors with its roof. I might cut this roof down a bit because I made it a bit overly wide, haven't I? It doesn't really fit in there very well. And um, yeah, try and find another XL Semi uh, buck converter chip and replace that and see if that fixes it. I don't think it's the second buck converter. There's normally a little buck converter which provides five volts or something for the microcontroller and the display. But I mean, as you can see, that's all working fine. So no, the problem is the the high power buck converter, um, which makes the whole buck converter module work. Now I need to move my um, flashing LED supercomputer board there off here, the little um, supercapacitor module which is charged up, which actually runs all these LEDs. I need to move that off here. I need to get the ant miner and move it down onto the bottom shelf with the other ant miners. And that means that I can then get this uh, new battery, my oh, 768 watt hour, I think it is, uh, battery with all the at-a-glance voltmeters, which has been sitting there patiently waiting to be hooked up to the second solar panel. I can move that over here put it on this shelf alongside my 614 watt hour battery they're both um eight cells so they're both 25 volt and then they'll sit side by side and then the ant miners will be down below um to empty these batteries whenever they get too full and um also i want to get the second solar panel currently the all black solar panel the far one there is connected up i want to get this uh, blue 240 watt solar panel connected up so that will also come uh, through a little hole in the roof there and onto this terminal block i'll use the other two connections for the other solar panel and then there'll be another pair of wires coming uh, across here i'm not sh quite sure what i'm going to do with this yet because i've got those two new uh, voltmeter ammeter watt meters and then, yeah, the cables will run down uh, into the second battery, which will be on that side of the shelf. And then there'll be more of these relays and so on. Now, I think what I'm going to do with these big um, LifePo4, these are 1280 watt hours. I think what I'm going to do is connect them, and I have done some tests of this recently, directly to ant miners. Now, I know some people said, well, why don't you do that? And... I wanted to test whether these ant miners will happily run off sort of high 13 volts, starts at about 13.6 volts, these LifePo4 batteries, and then when they're completely depleted, they're down at about 11 volts. And I just wanted to know if the ant miners were happy with that voltage range. And they do seem to be happy. The controller board has buck converters on it to get down to sort of 5 volts, 3 volts, 3.3 volts, that sort of thing. The hashing boards, I think, but convert the 12 volts down to something even lower. I mean, I have heard stories of the hash hashing chips, the ASICs running off one volt, um, simply because they run so quickly. So really the only issue is the fans, because they take um, the 12 volts directly in and then they've got a PWM and a TACO signal on this four wire cable. And so really I've been testing whether these fans behave themselves over that voltage range of high 13s down to sort of 11 volts and they do seem to be fine because of course the uh, controller board here varies the PWM signal on blue or yellow whichever it is um, and controls the speed of the fans and measures temperatures on the hashing board so it's all feedback loop controlled so even as the voltage drops or droops um, of course the controller can compensate for that by increasing the PWM to the fan so they seem fine and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the three of these big LifePo4 batteries just as heaters so I can come out to the shed switch on three ant miners on these three batteries they'll be slowly charged uh, from these batteries gradually over time 
um, and get the temperature in here up a bit so that I can actually spend some time out here when it's extremely cold, which it is now. So that's the end of this video because I'm freezing now. I'm going to go back inside. Um, so for this video, cheerio.